All right, this is Christine Deschler, Chair of the Arlington Finance Committee. And let me confirm that all members are present and can hear me. When I <coughs> call off your name, could you please say present? Um, starting with Jordan. Present. Shane. Here. Jennifer. Uh, yes, here. Sophie. Here. Ryan. Carolyn. Here. Rebecca. Here. Josh. Present. Grant. Here. Charlie. Here. John. Present. Daryl. Is Daryl here? Yeah, he, he is. He just raised his hand. All right, Daryl's here. Annie, you're here. Elle here. Jones is here. here. Topher? Here. I thought you were going to miss us. I'm glad to see you. Uh, Peggy? Here. El Tosti? Here. Dean? Here. And Dave? Here. And Tara? Here. All right. So let me read the script. Christine is there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can now. I have some microphone issues. This open meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, as extended on July 16, 2022, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with our agenda and materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment only in writing by email to tbradley at town.arlington.ma.us.com. For this meeting, the Arlington Finance Committee is convening my conference, video conference via Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join and comment. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other people may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. Before turning, before turning to the first item on the agenda, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker after they conclude their remarks. I will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair taking care to identify yourself. All right, with that, let's um, approve the minutes. Tara, can you bring up the minutes? All right, does anyone have any corrections or revisions to the minutes of uh, February 13th? All right, do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All right, let's, any further um, discussion on the minutes? All right, we'll take a vote to approve the minutes. Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Brian? He's not here. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Aye. 
John. Yes. Daryl. Yes. Annie. Abstain. I wasn't present. L. Jones. Yes. Topher. Yes. Peggy. Yes. L. Tosti. Yes. Dean. Yes. Dave. Yes. All right. The minutes have been approved. Seventeen in the affirmative. No negatives and one abstention. All right, um, before we get into um, substantive budgets, um, I just wanna go over what the projected schedule as we know it right now for the next couple of weeks. Um, and I want, um, so I want people to know what's coming up so people can be prepared for uh, what will be on the agenda. Um, we were, I was expecting um, the Capital Planning Committee to come in next Monday, the 27th, but they've asked um, uh, it to be rescheduled to accommodate um, Timor. So right now, um, we have no one coming in on the 27th, so we will try to do as much finishing up of budgets on the 27th as we can. Next Wednesday, March 1st, we're going to have Minuteman come in, and next Wednesday, will be an in-person meeting starting next Wednesday. All meetings will be at the community safety building unless there is a snowstorm. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Um, so on March 1st, next Wednesday, we have Minuteman coming in. On Monday the 6th, we have um, the Arts and Culture Commission coming in. Uh, we might also have Community Pre Preservation Committee coming in, but we haven't gotten confirmation yet. On March 8th is the um, Capital Planning Committee presentation. Uh, at least tentatively, we're going uh, we're hoping that they'll come in on the 8th. Um, Carolyn, I think you said you want, wanted to do reclassification on the 8th as well. Um, on March 13th, the Water Bodies um, group will come in. Uh, we have uh, right now, we have no presentations scheduled on March 15th or 20th, and to the extent we have any budgets left over, we'll certainly finish them by then. And on March 22nd, we have the schools coming in. Um, we still don't have the warrant, correct, Al Tosti? So we don't know what other hearings we may have to schedule. No, we still don't have a warrant. It really is ridiculous. Yeah. All right. Um, um, I know that Sophie has been trying to communi communicate with the Disabilities Commission and she'll just keep us posted on that. Um, anything else, Tara, that I've missed? Um, so we have a couple of things. We're going to find out when the Community Preservation Act can come in after their meeting tonight that's also going on right now. And then um, we'll also be hearing back from um, we're also going to be hearing back from another, the historical commission, I believe, um, or the and or the open space committee. One of them has a meeting tomorrow, so we'll be hearing back from one of them at the end of this week because it sounds like they are going to be requesting a budget increase. Mm -hmm. Are they both requesting a budget increase, both commissions? Um, po possibly. So they will we'll find out more after their their meetings and them kind of talking about it. Okay. Annie, you have your hand up? Yes, um, we should black out the 5th of April as a date we can't meet. It's the first night of Passover. Thank you. Thanks for pointing that out, Annie. Um, all right, so that is um, the tentative schedule going forward. Um, I'm going to do everything, Tara and I are gonna do everything we can to make sure that these groups have their materials to us as far in advance as possible, at least 48 hours ahead. Um, so, um, so that is that. Um, one other thing before we get into budgets, um, 
Daryl and, and John were able to get some supplemental information from Chief Flaherty, and I believe that was um, sent to everyone, correct? Yeah. Does, does anyone have any um, follow-up questions for Daryl or John on that material? I don't see any hands raised. Thank you for getting that stuff for us, Daryl and John. Um, Charlie also sent a follow-up email regarding um, the controller's budget. Uh, I think Sophie and Carolyn had some questions and Charlie followed up and got uh, some detailed information for us. And I think that too was made available. Any, any follow-up with that? Anyone have any questions for Charlie on that? All right, I don't see any hands up for that. And then last, um, Tara also sent around um, the clerk study that was commissioned and, and paid for. So I, I hope everyone takes a, a look at that if you haven't already. Um, all right, well, that's all I have uh, on preliminary matters. Um, budgets. Um, Let's start with um, the select board. Is the select board budget ready? Uh, yes, it is. Great. All right, take it away, Dave and Sophie. <laughs> if I can have a chat. Okay. Tara, can you bring up the budget for me? Can you make that a little bigger if you can? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> uh, before I begin the, the selectman's budget, uh, there was a, um, a question asked about the zoning budget, again, uh, in reference to the, uh, the position going from a 0.29 to a 0.89. And the reason why it's now a 0.89, what equals out to be 31 hours, is that um, the zoning is going to pick up that that position totally. Prior to that, it was shared with the uh, inspection services, um, and, and that has been done away with as far as the person retired, but th then they brought him back, and now he's fully retired again. So then they transferred a person into zoning at, at uh, 31 hours, and that makes it a 0.89 position. So that was a question that was, was asked again. I hope that satisfies um, the question. Does anyone have any questions on that? All right, take it okay. away, select board. Okay, now, now we'll go to select board. I will announce that um, the position of administrator board administrator has been filled. And um, it, was, it was filled in, internally. And I, Ashley Mond uh, was uh, given that position. So I wanted to make that, that that position is filled. Currently, they're looking for, um, a, they're gonna change a, a, a full-time position to a part-time position. And right now, presently, the, the young woman that was on maternity leave is back. They've hired a, a temporary person to cover when she was out. Um, he's still there. And um, so they're in the, they're in the process of, um, it's, it's almost like musical chairs. Uh, these people will, will be moving up accordingly, but, but that's, that's in process right now. Um, there'll be a new job description written for this part-time employee that they're looking for that used to be a full, was a full-time position, but it was vacant. Um, the budget itself really doesn't change much um, because there, there'll be a new salary for uh, the new board administrator and um, which would be different 
and that the board administrator also has because she has 10 years of service she also will be entitled to a, not a flat rate longevity but a percentage longevity no positions or uh, positions in in the selectman uh, select boards are non-union positions but the um the her position, new position comes under um, a percentage longevity rather than a flat rate longevity. Does anybody have any questions at this point? Uh, Carolyn? I do. Okay, good. I, I, did, I just didn't want to jump in and because I can only see um, so many people when we've got this up. So, so crop. Kropelka is being replaced, and we already know who she's being replaced by. Yes. Okay. Can we can we have them change the vacant to the name of that other person? Well, when this when when, the, when this budget was drawn up, that wasn't the case. This just okay. happened. This just happened in the last week, Carolyn. Okay. No. All right. So that person's eventually before this goes to town meeting, that name will be changed, which will give insight into the fact that I, I assume she's already a town um, employee when you said she already has 10 years in the town. Yeah, she worked in the board of selectmen and as, as well as the um, inspectional services. Okay, so so that'll impact um that, that'll demonstrate why her salary is what it is when the time comes. So mayor is the one who's moving up. Okay. Sorry, I didn't catch the beginning part. Um, right. I heard it, the part about people it, moving around. It'll be other people. Uh, their chairs will be moving, if you will. Okay. Okay. So yeah, just for Al, Al, you're the one that up updates the pages, right? So that this whole page can get updated before town meeting happens then. I guess. Okay, I'm done. Um, the report to town meeting doesn't have names, just has positions. Right. So I just, I, I just want to, when, Dave, when you said they're, did you say they're adding a position to this or they're just taking no, they, they were carrying. Well? They were carrying a, a position, but it was vacant and, um, what they're going to do is they decided they, they be in the board uh, to not have a full-time position, but a part-time position. In the right. meantime, they have had temporary help covering for the um, maternity leave of, of one of the workers. Okay, got it. All right, Al Jones, you have your hand up? Okay, yeah, just a question about the board administrator's uh, salary. It, it, it will be different than what's in this budget? Um, to answer your question, Alan, yes. So yeah. should, do, do we have that number? I, I will give you that number. Um, and I, I just got this number. So it okay. would be 94,471 M1 step two. That does not include longevity. I don't have. I think Sophie might have the longevity figure. Okay, I'm, I'm just wondering if we can get the right number so we can vote yes. on right. well, and adjust it. So this is the question is, we offered um, the town manager's office to update this salary detail and they did not want to, is my understanding, or said no, you know, when they run these budgets, sheets that's how they are and things are always moving and they can't always update everything yeah but so, we can <laughs> yes so i was given so julie had sent dave and i an email that said and i quote that as board administrator ashley's fiscal year 24 salary will be m1 step one 96,360 from july to january 2024 and m1 step three 99,972 from January to June 2024. She did not mention the longevity, which Dave did. So I don't know. Um, I wasn't aware there was a difference between the her. She's on there currently with a 700 
but I guess from like Dave saying, maybe that 700 changes because it becomes a percentage instead of flat. And I, I hadn't thought to ask that because I didn't realize that was a change that happens. Then the next question um, that comes up is, so the, the FTE on the principal clerk and typist is currently a 0.54. That position has been vacant since basically spring of 2021, even though it was in the budgets. So when some, so when the administrative assistant went on maternity leave, they had money in, you know, in their global budget to use to fill that, you know, have a temporary help. So that's how they paid for that temp position. Um, and so the expectation is um, that all these positions will now get filled, and they will be at 100% capacity and working. Um, I would note that the administrative position, I mean, to the extent the officer manager position now is vacant, it doesn't show vacant on here, but it's, it is now vacant. Would we want to lower or should we be lowering? I mean, that was sort of my question to Julie is normally when we have a vacant position, we go down. Is our financial committee sort of what we like to see happen? I, I don't know. So, what did you Ma think? Madam Chair, I'd like to table this until it settles down because I, I mean, if, if nothing else, if if we go to town meeting and they see basically Marie's salary on somebody new, there are going to be questions. So I'd rather avoid that and get the real numbers table this until we have those. Yeah, I can understand that as well as um, having the the vacant position would be listed at at the extreme high range of that position correct is that what you just said sophie right um, that's, that's my so that, concern that's my concern but i also understand that i don't you know by the time they post it's just so fluid and the timing is such that i don't know that they feel that they can update it i don't I, know well, they don't. They don't need to update it. They, they, you know, we, we need to update it, and the the admin, the board admin position is is filled. So we have a solid number there. We just, I mean, we don't have it, but there is a solid number, and the uh, vacant position there, the office manager, they'll have to set some cap on that that we should, you know, vote as a budget. So, and that's why I'd like to table it. Second. All right, Annie, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just want to mention that probably if, and Carolyn maybe could correct me on this if I'm wrong, what will happen with that office manager position is they'll decide what range they're posting it at. And that would be the range we, that would be what we'd want, want to put in the budget, I think is um, like they may down, downgrade the position in terms of greater step, but I don't know if that would be, would that be a position reclassification, Carolyn, or would they? Am I making sense? Yes, you're making sense. Um, Sophie was the one who said it, but yes, the as long as they're within the range, there's no chance, and they shift steps and grades around, even grades around, yeah. <clears throat> based on the qualifications that they're searching for. That that doesn't need to go through reclassification. It doesn't need to do any of that. It's it's at the discretion of the department head and the HR department. So, and Sophie, I think usually the finance department is the one that suggests the salary, but we strongly um, urge the department head um, to drop the salary um, so that they hear that from us. But that's about as much as we can do. At least that's my understanding. Somebody else can correct me if I'm wrong. Right, I don't think we can tell them that I don't think we can force the budget below the top of a range that they're planning to advertise it at, if that makes any sense. As much as we want them to hire at a lower salary, they also need to be able to be competitive if they find a person they really want. So, so the timer for three and a half minutes. Um, all right, but before we table this for the, um, on the sal Dave? Yes. Um, I just want to let, let everybody know that Sophie and I have spent this year many, many days trying to figure out these budgets as it, re, as it pertains to 
personnel and step raises and who's there and who's not. I'm gonna make a suggestion that perhaps um, Sophie and I have done just about everything we can, we, we can do on this particular budget and the questions that people have. I'm suggesting that we bring in the budget uh, director and, and have her explain it to everybody because we've gone around with this among other budgets for, for almost a month. Sophie, do you agree with me? I do. I, I think everything you all have said is is what we have said in our meetings and we're still here at this point. El Tosti? I think we should just adjust the, uh, we know the uh, board administrator's salary for the first six months and the second six months. Uh, if somebody could do the calculation, we could substitute the number and uh, you know, or come back, but it's, I, I agree. We can't put a, a $96,000 salary in, or we can't put $117,000 salary when it's going to be around 97 or 98. I mean, we don't need them to change this. We just need a new salary number to be plugged. The board and, and now, and now. Didn't want to interrupt, Al. I'm sorry, but are you also suggesting, or would you suggest um, taking the office manager position and and lowering it to the minimum range, or leaving it as is? Why don't we just maximum? leave it as is? You know, we're, we're trying to micromanage the selectmen's budget. We know that the uh, uh, the competition out there is tough. Um, if they come in less, that's great gives them more room to grow, but we do know the board administrator's salary. So we should change that, redo the numbers and go. Uh, Carolyn, you have a hand up? You're muted, Carolyn. So when we present to town meeting, the names of select board and the names of previous aren't on the sheet at all. Only the position, not the names. In other words, it'll say board administrator. But there's okay, no name attached so, to it. Right. So it, it goes, so the first column they see is job. Um, and then it goes down is the job column, which has the positions. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so they it they town meeting doesn't care whether or not there's a vacant or whether or not people have been moved around. Correct. Um, and at the moment the first three jobs will stay at full time and the fourth job the clerk typist will stay at half time correct that okay. clerk typist last year was at a one and this is the okay. first budget where it's at a 0.54 okay and and we know that the steps that are written here are correct and the grades that are written here are correct going going forward or we're not sure these are the steps and grades based on the names that are in this chart. So the office, so hypothetically speaking, if the if the person currently administrative assistant moves up to office manager, I don't know that her grade and step would be what's posted there. And same for the current principal clerk and typist temp person, if he were to move up to assistant. Um, administrative assistant, hypothetically speaking, and have a full-time job, um, I don't know that that would be his grade and step either. And Kropelka and Ma Maher haven't been willing to give you a sense of what those greater steps will be in all your meetings? Uh, well, well, first of all, Mrs. Kropelka, Kropelka has passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so that's okay. And she had been out of... And Ma, actually Ma has been in, in the position working out a grade for, <clears throat> so there's, there's some history here. Okay. Um, the plus side is all the vacancies, it appears will be filled and one, vac one vacancy will be from a, reduced from a full-time position to a, a half-time position. Right. And, Bear in mind that the second page where it has all the salaries written on, that is not pr produced by the board. That is produced by the manager's budget. 
So that's why I'm, I'm going back to, if we, ha if we have concerns, uh, my suggestion is bring, bring in the person that, that, that made up this chart. Right. Because Sophie and I have just, we're going around and around and around. Now we're going around and around with again tonight. Yeah. And I, um, I, I hear what Alan's saying, and I, I, both Alan's, and um, I don't disagree with them, but is everybody um, secure with that? It, it, for me, it's secure. I do have a meeting with HR director on March 7th. Is it okay if I ask her to look at these numbers and determine who, whether they will be changed? For who are you asking? I, I didn't, I didn't the, you the HR director. Um, no, I don't think it's a, at that. <laughs> I, I asked the budget director. Well, we have. We have a motion to table. We have a suggestion, but not a motion to bring in the budget director. We also have not quite a motion, but someone has suggested that we just do the math and reduce the budget. Um, we'll figure out what we're gonna do after we have um, asked all the questions. Um, I see Charlie's hands up before, before I let you speak, Charlie. I, 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 before we, decide what we do, what we, what we want to do on the salary page, I want to make sure we go through the expense page and eliminate, get rid of all, any questions we may have on that. But before we get there, Charlie, what's your, you have your hand up. Yeah, uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, I would, uh, it, it, I have the, the salary spreadsheet, general salary spreadsheet open on my computer and selected to the select board budget and in following Al Tosti's suggestion, you know, we could just type in the average numbers of the, the two ranges that Sophia and David mentioned and, and come up with that revised number and put it away. You know, that, that's the way I would, I, I would be willing to do that if, the, if that's what the committee wants. All right, let's go to the expense side of the budget. And let's um, talk about any, if anyone has any questions or Dave or Sophie, if you have anything to tell us about the expense side. Um, I, I will mention on, <clears throat> on line uh, 5215, telephone expenses. If you notice that's $1,000, that's for use of a cell phone by the board administrator. And it has been, uh, it's not activated since um, since November, but they still have it. They just have not activated it. In other words, they haven't put it back online, but that's what that thousand dollar item is. Some people ask about that all the time, but that's for a cell phone that's assigned to the board administrator only. Okay. Anyone right. have any questions about the expense side? Um, if I could, uh, Madam Chairwoman, just make a couple notes of um, things that came up in our meeting for future fiscal years to keep in mind. Yes, please, go ahead. Okay, so on the principal clerk and typist position, as we noted, it was decreased to a, a 0.54 from a full-time position. Um, the current board administrator would ideally like to see that go up in future years to a, a three quarter time position um, for the work. This person's position is intended to be focused on committee work, in particular TAC, which takes a lot of time and town day work. And noting that in 2025, there will be the 250th anniversary of the town, which will require more work. So to, ex you know, ideally, I think she would like to see that position increase. Um, also on line 5217, the, they are expecting an increase in fiscal year 25 for the MMA dues. And then as a side note, um, on the offsets, I had, we had noticed that the actuals and the budget, budgets were, were different and, and were curious and had an exchange with Sandy. And he said that just to alert, ideally, um, the town has used the same formulas for many years. 
and Sandy had hoped to update some of the offset formulas this year, but being down a town a deputy town manager, he could not assign anyone to that task. So he would like to see maybe in fiscal year 25 revisit the issue and maybe update some of our offset formulas, but otherwise doesn't see any major changes. So that would be just an across the board comment that came up because of this budget. So I think that's all the sort of notable exceptions. Um, the phone that Dave mentioned, that's sort of a, a proportionate share. I think the town has sort of a, a, a big um, pool of phones and they just allocate them and a fee. But in the past, the actual expense on that phone has only been about $300, not a thousand. Anything else, Sophie or Dave? No, no. I, I'm, what, whatever the chair decides, it's fine with me. All right. I see Jennifer has her hand up. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a quick question about the otherwise unclassified that had a big jump last year. The small amount, but I'm just curious. What it is? It for something particular, or or just open ended? I, I didn't get get the first part of the question. Oh, sorry. The um, the otherwise unclassified that had a big jump last year to twenty five hundred. Uh, I was just wondering if that was if there was something in particular that that determined that amount, or if it's just a open ended. It, kind it, of it, 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 it's open ended. It, it, there's a lot of different things that that, that come under that for running right. the app. Last year, um, they indicated it was the warrant pr printing. Um, although this year it was mentioned as being more of a select board report printing. So it, um, it kind of goes between the, it seems to get allocated between the office supplies line 5223 and the 5299. It's wherever they can get the money from to cover the printing costs for their reports. Got it. Thanks. Ella Jones. Hi, I just, uh, going back to my motion to table, uh, I, I'd, I'd rather let them do the arithmetic and, uh, and I'll volunteer to get the numbers out of uh, the town manager's office if that makes things easier. Any other questions, comments on the select board's budget? Charlie. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I, I think, uh, let me raise this question uh, to Al. Um, you know, I think, is it possible that the the reluctance of the budget director or whomever to actually change this and put the um, the right number in there, uh, simply uh, a position on their part to to keep more money in the budget. In other words, to um, you know keeps keeps the entire salary structure higher, so they have more flexibility and you know puts us in a position at town meeting of approving a. Uh, value for that uh, for that line item, that's um, you know not reality. Is, that seems more like a comment than a question, right, Charlie? Uh, my it was my a question to Al. What do you think is going on, Alan Jones? Uh, I, I sorry, I, I guess I wasn't reading that into it. I just. Figured they 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 have the numbers. Uh, they they can give us the numbers. I, I if I mean I'm, if they're trying to pad the budget, then yeah, we should step on that. But uh, if uh, but but I don't think they are. I think they it, they're just you know they have a lot of work to do. And I think if I ask the question, I'll get the numbers and let them do the arithmetic. Because I, you know we, we we can do averages. We can try to guess. We can guess the line. You know because we know that Mars is going to bring some longevity with her. And et cetera, but it can get complicated. And then why not let them do it? And give us some numbers so we can vote on. That, that's my position. And like I said, I, I volunteer to get those numbers. Was that a motion, Alan Jones? Well, well I already I think, motioned the table. Yeah, oh, there's okay. a, there's there's a, there's right. A, right. There's already been a motion to table, which was seconded. seconded. Um, Shane, you have your hand up? I, I do. Thank you, Madam Chair. A question about expenses. But uh, what are the audit reports? What do they cover? Um, so 
$78,000. That, that report is, comes through the comptroller's office. Uh, it's a special report and it, the report goes to the board of selectmen, or the select board rather. Um, yeah, it is, it's the cost of the annual audit, Shane. Right. Yeah. The if, if, yeah, if I could just butt in. Yeah, that's what we pay Powers and Sullivan. And if you go on the SharePoint, you can read the audit from FY22. It's a comprehensive document. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, before we address the motion to table, does anyone have any specific questions about any specific line items that we haven't covered already? Uh, Madam Chairperson, can we pass the um, the audit figure separately? Um, I would think we could, yes. Then I'll make a motion um, accounting and auditing total of $78,000 as printed in, in the budget. Seconded. All right. A motion to approve 78,000 for the audit reports has been made and seconded. Um, any discussion or questions about that? All right, let's take a vote. Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Paul Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. El Tosti? Yes. Dean? Yes. And Dave? Yes. All right, that, was, that budget has been passed unanimously. All right. Now we have a motion to table the select board's budget. It's been seconded. Uh, and I think Al Jones has uh, volunteered to figure, find out exact, the exact salary amount for the board administrator. Um, now, I don't, uh, I think Al Tosti, you were suggesting that we just simply do the calculations ourselves tonight. Are you making a motion? No, I, I you know, Al's right, because we got to get the longevity also. Uh, so unless we're willing to highball a little bit, uh, would Al get the exact numbers calculated and we'll pass this in, you know, a couple minutes. So let's just table it. All right, does anyone have any alternative motions or any questions or discussion about the, the, the motion to table? All right, seeing them. All right, Shane? I'm sorry, so are we table, thank you, Madam Chair. Are we tabling it so that Al, Al and Jones can talk to the, the manager's office? Is that the purpose of the motion yeah. on the table? Yes, so I can get the actual numbers. Okay, thank you. Sophie? Sorry, so just to, so is that going to be the only question? I know we said it's a bit micromanaging on the other ones, but if all the other ones are gonna move up and they're current list, currently listed at the top steps of eight, should he be asking about if those steps will lower or just let that go? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to ask for the numbers. I mean, I'm sure the administrator number will go down and the other ones, whatever the market, uh, you know, bears. And, and, you know, what they should do is give us the, the top of the, of the, of the realistic range. If it's 200,000, we can challenge it, but otherwise the top of the range, because they know the hiring uh, and, and that's their budget. And I'm sure they'll want to hire as low as they can, but that's the money they have to spend. But I'll get the whole table. Any other questions, comments? All right, um, we are taking 
I'm going to take a vote to table this, um, the select board's budget um, so that L. Jones can get more information on the salaries. All right. Um, Jordan. Yes. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John. Yes. Daryl. Yes. Annie. Yes. Al Jones. Yes. Topher. Yes. Peggy. Yes. El Tosti. Yes. Dean. Yes. And Dave. Dave. Are you muted, Dave? He seems to have dropped off. This is his usual connectivity problem time. <laughs> I will look out for him when he tries to rejoin. But um, yes, he seems to have dropped off. All right. Uh, it's past 17 to zero based on people who are here right now. All right. Um, town manager budget. Okay, so Dave, Dave and I were prepared for him to have internet problems. He disappeared. <laughs> so um, I uh, will take this one. So it's on page 25, Torrance. And quickly on the salaries and wages, just a reminder from the explainer that we received um, that there's going to be a one month overlap between Sandy and the two now and the new manager. They are posting for the position, posting for the position has closed and interviews will be soon. And the interviews will be with a panel. And we think we understood it's with two staff members. Um, the deputy town manager, so this is a new number that maybe we want to do the same thing and plug this in. The deputy town manager will start in fiscal year 23 at 138,000, which is higher than what is here, I believe, in the budget book, because that was just hired. Then the budget director position the last one on the list um, has the significant increase there is because there is going to be a reclassification article um, at town meeting about this position. It was a grade six, step eight. It's now a grade 10, step eight. eight. Pardon me? Yeah. So it was grade, right. So now it's grade 10, step eight. And the reason for the change is that this position is now solely responsible for the budget, whereas this used to be a shared um, responsibility. The, there's a new position listed for communications coordinator. This is an ARPA funded position and there's a corresponding offset. There's a decrease in longevity uh, because of several departures. And the other benefits is decreased because, sorry, if you want to scroll back up, um, the other line items, other benefits, that's decreased because it was the previous town managers um, in his contract. So on to expenses, if we want to go back up, Tara is the one that's controlling the screen. Okay, I will, um, not much to say other than um, the out of state travel is for conferences. Um, the line 5220 for website support services, it's going to be an ongoing need. Um, it's to help with improving accessibility to the town's websites. The 
Upon questions, uh, there's a concern for the future and increase in budgets regarding increasing salary needs and decreasing in services. If we continue to just level fund, um, salaries are getting more expensive and it would require a decrease in services if we keep things level for the future. Any questions? Does anyone have any questions on the town manager's budget? Daryl. Um, just on the last comment you made, Sophie, is the, the cautionary note about level funding, is that applied to the entire town budget or just the manager's budget? Um, I, I'm going to say it applies across the board. We heard it from all department heads. Okay. I can, I can live with that if it was just applied to the town manager. That wouldn't sit that well, but thank you. You're welcome. Carolyn? You're muted again, Carolyn. First, Tara, can you in, uh, scroll up so that we're at the other, that we're not at the salary budget? Thanks. Yeah, sorry, I was just on the line with so, Dave. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, which is why I, I figured I'd wait. Um, so the that last comment about salaries, our last um, town manager had a really nice package. Um, are we really going to bring in another town manager at that level? No, they it, it shows a um, there's a decrease in in the in the budget book when you look at it the when you look back on the detail page for the new town manager uh, there is a decrease not by much but there also isn't the other benefits and isn't there isn't the longevity and those other items right okay i just let everybody know i'm back i'm using my cell phone all right great to have you back dave um, Carolyn, do you, have any, do you have anything else, Carolyn? No. All right. Grant. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Sophie, last budget you mentioned something about the, uh, the offsets increasing, and that was only 2%. And you'd mentioned something about, I'm not sure, I'd like to hear more about what, you, what was mentioned again. And also, um, these offsets for the town budget are much higher. Now, uh, so a full disclosure, the offsets are part of the water sewer budget. Um, so there's kind of a reason why I'm asking. Did you uh, inquire about why this one raised 35%? I did. And the response across the board on offsets was it's just formula based. Let me, let me jump into the, the, I think we also are seeing some ARPA funds as an offset for the um, communications coordinator. I think that might also um, result in a higher offset or that 65, part of that 65,000. But I could be wrong, but that, it is uh, an ARPA position. That is an excellent point, Ms. Chair, thank you. Um, yes, so, it's formula based is correct. And Powers and Sullivan are the folks that derive that formula. And uh, I don't remember the formula changing. Um, I, I remember uh, offers that they were gonna look into it, but the formula that, that Powers and Sullivan gave us has not changed. Um, so I can understand the, the offsets increasing and decreasing slightly. Um, not because of the percentages, but because of the actual amount of the offsets. Um, but I think the large percentage here is going to be is best explained by the ARPA offset is included in that. So, so thank you. Um, yes. Uh, for it, that, it, it's Christine's right. I actually I have that in my notes right here. Where I asked why the large increase, and in it the specific response was it includes ARPA position on staff. So that was the response. Excellent. Thank you again. Charlie. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, so my, I have a question. Why is the, uh, 
in the salaries of this, we, we, there are two town manager lines in the salary detail. And uh, yes, the, uh, the town manager's salary goes down from 234,000 to roughly 229,500. But there's a, uh, another line for the town manager of uh, $20,000, which is shown as still there. And, um, and I, uh, I understand that these other benefits go away, but shouldn't that 19,000 also go away? No, that's the one month overlap between. Oh, okay. All right. I'm, I, I got it. Thank you. Uh, Annie. Yeah. Can you scroll back up to the expenses for a minute? I just want to check something under, there's a line called other benefits. That zeroed out. That other benefits was part of that generous package for the former town manager. Correct. So this is where we're seeing that go away, that portion of the package? Yes. Am I correct? Okay. Correct. Anything else, Annie? All right, Shane? Thanks, Madam Chair, and thanks, Sophie. Uh, actually, I have three questions, but I'll rattle off. Um, one is, what is a communications coordinator, and how is it different from a public information officer. Uh, second is uh, we're gonna obviously have a vacancy for deputy town manager finance. Do we have a plan post or fill that position? Seems like an important position. And then last, um, what do the dues and subscriptions cover for $18,000? Okay, so the deputy the deputy town manager finance is the one that has just been hired. And okay. that's the one that's coming in at 138,000, which is higher than what's in this budget book. So query if we wanna change that number and vote in a different number. Um, the dues and subscriptions as for governmental financial officers associations, MMA and some other associations that staff are um, members of. And the communications coordinator, do you know oh, yeah. exactly what they're what that person is doing? Um, I can't say that I do. I don't know if Dave, he, he has some of the back again. Uh, the question is, what's the, the different what's the difference between the communication coordinator that's being paid for with ARPA funds and the public information officer? Is there a distinction between those two positions? And their tasks, I guess. I, I believe that I know one one position will go away. Right, the ARPA with, with the end of, with, the, with the ending of, of the funding. Correct, the communications coordinator that goes away. Right. Tara has uh, thrown up a job description uh, for the communications coordinator. Is this? It, it's a self. It's a LinkedIn page. Okay. I'm trying to find something that's, I'm trying to find the old job posting. Okay. Okay. Thanks, thanks everyone. Um, Topher. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was curious, we have a CPA offset for a 0 0.40, and I'm just wondering what, what position or what part of a, what, what part of what position is the CPA offsetting? I'm sorry if I missed that. If I, I, um, I can answer that question when I get to them. <laughs> Let's see. There is a position. That, um, Alan Jones looks like he might know. Well, it, it, if I could, yeah. uh, Jim Feeney spends a lot of time on the CPAC, so I'm guessing it's Jim Feeney. All right. There's an, I think, I think it's the position that goes away with the, with the elimination of the funding. The position will go away with the, the elimination of the funding, but uh, Topher's question mm -hmm. is, um, what is the CPA offset, not the ARPA offset? Yeah. And I, okay. I think the answer is that Jim, Jim Feeney 
does okay. it is probably par partially to offset the time he spends working on CPA issues. Yeah, and he spends right. a lot of time doing that. On the community, okay, on the community yeah. preservation act stuff. Yeah, Correct. he does all the inspections. I mean, it's sort of part of his old facilities job. Okay. Anything else, Topher? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Grant. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, um, lots of turnover going on in the, or everywhere actually, including the town manager's uh, office. Um, I, Sophie, was there, or does anybody know the, has me a little bit concerned, um, all this experience kind of walking out the door. Um, is there a, the transition plan call for like uh, maybe Sandy Pooler to provide assistance or, you know, quote, consulting um, for the, and supporting the new town manager for a period of time, or are you aware of anything like that? That's the one month um, overlap is what that is supposed to be planned for is my understanding. And my, and, and Julie being reclassified at a, a much higher grade and step, I think plays into that with her experience and maybe more that she will be taking on and helping on that. Uh, so still, that's, that's... If, I can, if I can, to help answer your question, um, in all of the budgets that we have, Sophie and I, uh, you will notice that there's been um, quite a transition of personnel in a good portion of the um, departments, except the legal department. Um, you'll, notice, you'll notice changes in the clerks, in the planning, the managers, the lackmen, and, um, and, and that's why on, on the salary issues that we have, there's different steps and uh, there's, there's midpoint steps and, um, uh, it, it, it can be very confusing um, with, with these changes. And one of the things that was brought to our attention, uh, both Sophie and I's attention throughout, what they seem to be a theme that department heads were mentioning that perhaps maybe this transition is because other communities are, if you will, offering a um, better financial package and some of these folks are leaving to go elsewhere if i may right. we were i think yeah. we were specifically we were specifically told that there's one concern and that was well stated succinctly was that to retain and recruit non-union managers and financial position employees in the next five to ten years is going to be an issue that um you can see in the planning department um in the library which is not ours um, there's a lot of turnover and it's a lot of it is due to recruitment and because we have very good personnel um, with experience and they're being um, headhunted or siphoned off by by other towns for their experience. And another sure, no, I understand all, all of that. In yeah. fact, we have the same same issue occurs in the water and sewer this year, too. But but that's different than the issue. I'm uh, I'm I'm kind of bringing up the transitional issue. Um, Julie is great but it's a one for one sandy only a month to give this new per i mean that's that's i guess i there's no way around it there's no nothing we can do about it but it or perhaps there is sure it might and, and i don't think sandy would really go for it but it be, might be better if he hung around or or could provide assistance for a little bit more than 30 days a lot happens in that and this is a a, a lot going on in this town and the person coming in probably knows very little about it. But all right, uh, thank you. One month is the answer. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Grant. Elle Jones? I'm sorry, that was a zombie hand. Okay. All right. Um, any other questions about this, the town manager's budget? John? Um, earlier in the discussion, <clears throat> The, I think someone mentioned that uh, the town manager position will went up a grade because they are now they have sole control over the budget. I'm just wondering who they formally shared the budget 
responsibility no. with? No, 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 not the town no, manager. Right, that's um, budget director, Julie Wayman. The last line on there, she was yes. formerly um, a grade six, step eight. She's now grade 10. She used to share responsibility with the deputy manage, town manager of finance. So with Sandy, she helped Sandy prepare the budget. And then now she is solely responsible for it. Got it. So I, I had the wrong position. It's it's Julie. It's it's the the, the budget director position that that moved. Correct. Thank you. She Thank used you. To, she used to share that. So my follow up question to her was, well, does that mean the deputy town manager for finance coming in will have less work to do <laughs> since she's doing the budget? And she said, no, there's more than enough work to go around, and he will have a full plate nonetheless. Got it. Thank you, uh, Charlie. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, my question is, why is that grade changing here in the in this paid detailed page? I mean, it, shouldn't it be the same grade that it was last year? And um, and any ch change in grade has to come in the in the uh, article on uh, reclassification. Ka Carolyn, do you want to speak to that? That was one of my part of my question as well is why is why is it here and not a reclassification, because it is a change in her job requirement. So usually that would go through a reclass. I was curious too. it sounded to me, although I, I admit I didn't quiz her on it. It sounded to me like it had already gone through. Is that possible? It may have gone yeah. through last year and half of it was last part of last year and half of it was part of this year. I know there is one reclass that that's the case. Did I ask you to look at reclass for anyone in this budget? I don't remember seeing her on that list. I looked, but I don't. David, do you remember? Um, let me look up the list. No, I, I don't remember seeing her name on the list. Madam Chair. Ellen. Yeah, the, uh, I think the town manager has the authority uh, on his own, as long as the money is there uh, to, to reclassify uh, positions. Um, it's uh, the people who go for reclass are generally those, you know, uh, employees who want to uh, sort of advocate for themselves. But I think this is, well within the town manager's uh, statutory authority to do it as long as he has the money. Thank you. Carolyn, your hand is still up. Do you wanna ask or add anything? The, it brings up an interesting topic that we've got um, Julie Wyman now doing part of the finance job. So in the last three to five years, we've gone from a town manager and a deputy manager and, a, and the deputy manager um, who helped with budgeting with the budget director, we added in the operations budget and now we're taking the budget, half of the finance deputy town manager's job and giving it to the budget director. So in four or five years, we've added two to two and a half positions, plus we're giving them all raises I, I'm, and grade um, levels. It's just a huge increase in the amount of professional staff we have. And maybe that's what all towns need, but when we're looking at overrides, these are big, huge changes. You know, the that's it. I know I'm on my soapbox. Um, there are no new positions in this budget this year, correct? Not this year, but in the last three or four years, we've seen these increases in, in people on the budget in, in people in the town manager's department. And, and Sophie, Dave, is it your understanding that um, Julie Wayman is taking on 50% of the deputy town manager's position. 
No, my understanding is she's taking full responsibility for the budget and that she felt the town deputy town manager finance would still have a full plate. I don't know what percentage she used to share that budget with him. So obviously that wasn't her position, but. Annie, you have a Annie? Yeah, so I, I just, having been sort of intimately familiar with a lot of the changes that have happened here over the years, um, I have a perspective. So one of the things that we recommended many years ago, and then we had a DLS, I think it was Department of Division of Local Services study on, was how we managed finances and how disjointed they were and how we needed to pull them together into their own department. And that's essentially what that deputy town manager for finance does. That person is now supervising the comptroller and um, the treasurer, essentially, and um, so is responsible for the full scope of our financial operations, as well as coordinating with the schools. Um, the budget is a pretty, the development of the budget every year is a very specific narrow piece of that responsibility that isn't the overall management of finances, but is the, you know, create the plan every year. So for me, as somebody who's walked many organizations through this, um, the staffing here makes sense. And if it's staffing that's grown, I would say it's grown, you know, mostly through position title changes because we had a deputy town manager and an assistant town manager for many years, probably the last 10 or 15 years. Um, and they've simply changed the titles and responsibilities of those positions. So my two cents. And, and I'll also add that the communications coordinator in this budget is going away next year because uh, there won't be ARPA funding. Um, so I'm, I would expect that this budget to shrink next year. El Tosti. Yeah, I, I just want to reinforce what Annie said. You know, it's the same number of bodies except for the communications coordinator, which will go away. Uh, we've always had these number of positions. Uh, the deputy town manager for operations get paid substantially out of uh, CPA funds for the work he does there. Um, I, I think it's a good budget and, and I recommend it. And just to get the ball going, I'd like to make a motion uh, that we approve the budget as presented. Do I have a second? Second. All right, Daryl, your hand is up. Um, I, I'm going to take it down. I just want to to comment that um, you know, based on you know what we've seen of some of the budget mechanics, um, frankly, I think it would be it would be really good that um, we are going to have a full. Full-time budget person whose entire focus is on the operating budget and the capital budget. So I think it's something we really need. Sophie? So just a question about the motion. Do we want to, since we know what the new deputy town manager for finance salary is and it's higher than what's here, do we want to make that change or not? I would say no, because we don't have a town manager. And I'd leave it up to um, the town, the select board to figure out how they're going to, and the town manager to keep their budget within budget for next year. All right, so we have a motion um, that's been seconded to approve the town manager's budget as presented in the town manager's uh, book. Any other comments, discussion on that motion, on that budget? All right, seeing none, we'll take it to a vote. Uh, Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? No. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. L. Jones? 
Yes. Topher. Topher? Sorry, yes. Peggy? Yes. Altosti? Yes. Dean? Yes. Dave? Yes. Seventeen four one against. I got budget has been approved. Uh, human resources? No, no, not today. Wait. Move that to the same day as reclass. Okay. Um, IT, is that budget ready? No, we're still waiting on. Uh, the, the, the legal budget is ready, Madam Chairperson. Uh, all right, let's do legal. Yeah, you have to be with me because I'm on a cell phone rather than, for some reason, I'm locked out of the um, uh, finance meeting. But it's a better connection. Say that again. It's a better connection, at least on our side. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, the legal budget. It's 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 the, the budget that has the personnel staying put. <laughs> and if you notice the, the increase in the salaries is basically the increases um, whether they be uh, cost of living adjustment or step increases and, it, and whatnot the um the expenses are staying the same uh for, for the new members um the legal department will will hire outside counsel for special things that happen. Example, uh, labor negotiations, or if there's a, um, some type of uh, environmental legal question that the, they hire expertise in that field. Or uh, in, in the case of uh, the MUGA property, they, they hire people um, to, to handle that particular type uh, situation that's been going on for a number of years. Um, but they're satisfied that they, that, that they can handle um, next coming budget with the same amount expenses as last year. All right, any questions on this budget? Sophie. Um, if I just may add a few more details that we were given then as far as future things to keep in mind. Um, the legal office is in an old building on Pleasant Street, and it is quite dilapidated shape. Um, so they do want to note that they will be seeking probably CPA funds for exterior work on the building and even interior work for heating issues, air quality, et cetera. And they're working through the facilities department as well to extent they can come through there. So something to keep in on the lookout in the CPA. Um, and good news is that the tree warden is doing a good job in getting money back from utility companies for dead trees, which supposedly is something hard to do, but he's very good at it. Um, the legal department also wanted to alert the finance committee that they are available to provide us as a committee any training um, on issues and that they do uh, training for other committees in town if we're so interested. Great. All right, thank you, Sophie and Dave. Jordan. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to make sure for my own understanding, the expense line, um, their only expense line is uh, just for outside uh, council, correct? No. The, no, 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 no. Right, so they oh, have- they have bar dues, bar okay. associations, in particular the MMLA, legal databases, court fees, filing fees, which are actually pretty modest, their office supplies, their travel, 
some unclassified ex expenses for court reporters for certain hearings when those are required, and then outside counsel. They, they don't tend to break out all their expenses. They're busy. <laughs> so it's just all up together. Okay, thank you. Shirley? Thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. I, I just wanted to note that the um, building that they reside in is not owned by the town. So uh, there is a method for the, um, for the uh, CPA uh, group to um, work on the outside of that because it could be considered a historical building or, or some such thing. But the building itself is not owned by the town and I don't know how the town can spend money on the interior. That to me is a mystery. Uh, that had come, come before the Capital Planning Committee several times. The, I, personally, I think the solution is that um, they ought to move into another town building. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, 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 Madam Chairperson, uh, Madam, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, there's no way I can, uh, I just wanted to say, uh, the, the, there's a working there's a working agreement or contract with who, whomever owns that that old building, and the town some some years ago, many years ago, agreed to follow whatever um, that contract says. So uh, I I don't know if that includes the interior or not, but uh, it is under contract. It's been under contract for as long as I can remember. I just. Just bringing that point up. Well, I will um, look to our facilities working group to keep an eye on that as well as Daryl and the Capital Planning Committee. Um, it's, it's good to hear what may be coming down the line, but right now, um, I guess there's not an issue in front of us with regard to the right. work on, on the building. Any other questions? about the legal department budget. Motion to approve. Second. All right, there's a motion to approve um, the legal department budget as presented. Any other questions or any discussion? All right, uh, let's take a vote. Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. L. Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Dean? Yes. And Dave? Yes. All right. The legal department budget has passed unanimously. Sophie, Dave, do you have any other budgets? Yes, we, we have a, a few more. A few more. A town right. clerk would be next. All right, let's do that. Okay. Um, I, I'll start and, and Sophie will jump in um, when needed because we're, we're kind of doing this together. The um, the town clerk's budget uh, actually is there's three budgets involved with the town clerk. That would be the town clerk's budget, the election budget, and the board of registrar's budget. So when we're talking about it, 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 it it's easy if we talk about the three of them at the same roughly the same time because there's an overlap. But we'll vote the budget separately, the total separately. Um, if, if, if that's the will of the committee. The, um, Go ahead. Again, I, again, there's not, there's not a lot of changes. Uh, a couple of, because the, the change item is, is in the salary, because again, there was step increases and there was, there was um, pay raises and, and, and whatnot. Um, however, in the clerk's office itself, there's been a change of personnel, if you will. Um, last September, the, the assistant 
uh, uh, Board of Registrar retired, so that created a vacancy in the registrar's office. And as of uh, Jan- this past January, uh, January uh, 2023, the assistant town clerk um, is retiring and she's still on the payroll and she'll be on the payroll until sometime, I think the first week of March when she officially is retired. But right now she, the, the, the position is vacant and, and she's out. Um, I, apparently she's, she's out taking time old or something like that. Um, meantime, um, if you, the, the personnel in the clerk's office itself, minus one person, has less than, well, less than six months experience. So there's been a, there's, there's been a, um, the office has changed hand, changed personnel. That develops the problem that, that a lot of us had, had concerns about as far as um, modernizing the, the clerk's office. It's hard to do when, when, you, when you lose employees and then bring in new employees and first of all, you have to train them on what the job is all about before you can then train them for other things. Um, well, one question that was, that was sent to us was asked about on the, um, why do we have a stenograph? The, um, um, and and uh, uh, we, is that the only department that has that? The, the, the clerk's office uses it for town meeting, has been, has been doing that for quite a while. But they are currently looking in to see if they, um, because we're electronically, um, everything's electronically now at, at town meeting, if perhaps maybe in the future they can do away with that altogether. Uh, it currently, the, the, they're looking into that, and um, town council has been looking into it on a, uh, the, legal, the legal part of it pertaining to the town. Um, the, the clerk office in the last three years we've had a, a new clerk she's finishing up her first three-year term and in that time she's experienced a recount that the town hasn't had in years years and after that was um, resolved then we had COVID-19 uh, we had uh, and as a result we had mail-in voting early voting um, that, that that took a lot of time and a lot of money. And then we had, after that, we had redistricting. So the, um, it's been an on-the-job training for the new town clerk as well. But having said that, um, some of the things, another question was on line item 5227, binding. That's just a term that the comptroller uses um, but as far as binding, binding used to be when town meeting was all over, they would take all the um, warrant articles and uh, bylaws and whatnot, and they would actually bind them in a book. But they really don't do that anymore. And that's why that, that budget, that line item is, is vacant. But it's still used. Um, I don't know if other departments might use that periodically. I'm not sure. So... Um, Printed licenses, for the most part, uh, the printed licenses for the most part is dog licenses. The state, uh, the state provides the marriage licenses, but we do the dog licenses, and and there's a lot of them. And then, of course, we have other um, otherwise unclassified, which could be um, maintenance of equipment. It, it could be office supplies, but not. And going back to line 5201, advertising, anything that comes out of town meeting, especially on the zoning articles, they all have to be posted in the local newspaper. However, what they've been doing is they've, they've been actually trying to um, shorten what they're, with town council advice, shorten some of the, the wording and some of the things that, that they're printing in the paper because it, it, the cost is, is uh, quite heavy. Um, and they're looking into with town council's advice and the legislature, legislature to, to perhaps maybe go strictly electronically 
posting rather than, uh, as we all know, that the local newspaper isn't what it used to be, I'll say. So um, another question that, that, that was, was asked is why is there an increase in electronic voting equipment? As we know in the last, well, the last town election, we have the, what they call poll pads. And the, the clerk's office has purchased 21 of them, one for each precinct, and there's an, um, an increase for the, for, for the equipment. And, and we, we used them first, the first time we used them, I believe, was um, in the state primary. And then we used them at first time in all the precincts was the last town election. So that's why there's an increase there. Um, the, um, the, the next elections in, in, in the, the new budget, there won't there'll be a presidential primary in March, a year from this coming March, and there'll be a town election. So there'll be a decrease in the elections compared to what we, we just went through with state primary, state election, and whatnot. So um, also, it's not official yet, but they will be, my understanding is they'll be early voting for the next coming town election, but it won't be the way it has been conducted in the past. It will be done on a, a Friday, Saturday, maybe Sunday type deal at the clerk's office. Not, not on the town, town hall floor. Um, they, Board of Selectmen still have to approve that. Having said that, there seems to be an, a, an increase. Mail-in voting seems to be the top priority that everybody, that, that most voters want. If they, if they don't want to come and vote themselves, mail-in voting is, is, is what they prefer. Having said that, in the Board of Registrars, there was an increase because there was a mailing went out asking people what was their their desire, whether they wanted to do uh, have a ballot sent to them for mail-in voting, whether they wanted to do absentee voting, or whether they want to just come into the voting poll and, and vote on election day. So that was an additional cost. Also additional cost in the Board of Registrar is what they call the true list. The true list lists um, everybody in the town, 17 and older with some exceptions. If you work in the public safety parts of the town, like firefighters or police officers, you can, um, if you choose, your name does, doesn't have to go into the, vote, uh, the true list. But they're the only ones that, uh, if they choose to, uh, can have that e exemption. And there's a number, two, there's more than one type true list. There's the true list, and there's also the alphabetical true list that lists people in the town if they've done their census uh, alphabetically. And, and that's printed as well. And then um, in addition to that, the, um, the census itself, uh, mailing out doing the census and whatnot. So that's why I say the three budgets go overlap. Um, anybody have any questions? Hello? Hello? Yeah, um, the assistant town clerk position. Hello? Can, can you hear me, Dave? Yeah, Sophie, I can hear, can you, you, hear me? Yes, I can hear I you. I can hear you. The assistant, the assistant town clerk position is expected to be vacant in this next, next it, fiscal year. It, 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 is. Vacant. It, it is vacant right now, um, it, but she's still on the payroll. Up so until I'm, looking at, I'm, I'm looking at the, at the salary, which right. looks like so, the, at the maximum she is at a maximum. What the town clerk told us is that she would obviously be looking to hire below that. Um, right. But again, um, there was they, the town declined to update the budget book showing a lower number. Because she is, because she just retired. Well, she gave notice she was retiring this right. past year. Yeah. I, I understand that. I just, I'm, I'm just looking at that, knowing that, that they're posting this or they're, they're asking for the full salary range for, for a new position, for a, high, for a new hire. Right. Correct. Um, Again, at the time this went to print, um, she had not submitted her uh, retirement paperwork yet. So 
Right. The budget director was not aware at the time that she, this was printed. Since uh, then, yeah. right, and Got so it. no update yet. And just um, as a minor typo on this page, the minimum and maximum for our town clerk you will see is lower than what her new pay is, but those, that's a typo. Her minimum and maximum should be that 102982. That doesn't actually change anything, but in case you want to update your books. Okay, thank you. Do you want to add anything else, Sophie? Um, some future notes. Um, we were, it was clear that because things are moving to trying to move the office towards more digital office, um, it's it's requiring higher salaries for staff who are better trained and, and better on uh, digital formats and that turnover is high also because of lower salaries and that more and more state level amendments and changes are required from town clerks and that requires a certain level of understanding and processing from staff that didn't used to exist. So that's going to continue to be an issue. Um, there's a mention that we currently don't have, it's not in this budget, but we don't have an animal control officer. Um, that position has been vacant for a while and it affects this office for some unlicensed kennels because uh, this is the office that would license kennels. And so we've had some issues in town regarding unlicensed kennels. Um, and for future notes, uh, Tara posted the study that was done at the town clerk's office. And although the study doesn't make any particular recommendations, um, it to the extent that there would be an interest in moving to an appointed position for town clerk instead of elected, the, the thought is that the, high, the salary would most likely increase um, for the town clerk position because the salary is for an elected official, but a market rate would most likely be higher for a town clerk. So something to keep in mind as, as that study is reviewed. Um, in that there is a potential need for a part-time position in the future because one of the things brought up by the study is public record requests. Those are not currently done, done by the town clerk's office historically in Arlington, but most towns do that job in the town clerk's office and that's where the job of public records requests and responding to them comes from. So if that job were to go back as a result of the study to the town clerk's office, they would most likely need an additional part-time position to handle those types of issues. Would that, would that mean that there'd be a decrease in the, with the uh, town manager's budget because isn't the town manager, deputy town manager responsible for that? Uh, I don't know. Well, that would be my uh, question the, going uh, forward uh, if that happened. If, 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 I can, if I can jump in there. Um, originally, the town clerk was the keeper of the records. I don't know at what point the keeper of the records was given to the, the deputy town manager, um, but that's where it is right now. Um, but but the, um, the standard in, in most cities and towns with clerks is they are the keeper of the record. I don't know what 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 went on between uh, pr previous town clerks and how it ended up in responsibility of a, of a deputy manager. All right, Josh, you have a hand up. Yes, thank you. Just a couple of small things. Um, in the printing licenses, you said the dog, those were mostly dog licenses. The the actuals are quite a bit higher. I mean, not quite a bit, a few thousand dollars higher than the budgeted amount. But yes. So, um, so supposedly they're ordering fewer dog tags, but the costs of printing have gone up. Right. But the actuals are actually higher than the budget. Like they, the actuals for the last couple of years are like 4,000 or, and they've just budgeted 1,000. So are they going to be cheating themselves there? No, that used to be, sorry, that's, so the thousand is correct. The 4,000 is before um, things were, that was also printing ballots. And that has now with some reorganization that we discussed last year, got transferred to the other election, more of the elections budget. So there was some moving around of funds that occurred okay. last year. Okay. And maybe that's leads into my other question, which is that you've got $20,000 in the budget for printing ballots for 23 and 24 and no actuals and that's that the dog licenses and something else is shifting. It has nothing to do with ballots. 
Correct. So under the elections expenses, the 20,000 for printing ballots is what, so with the new town clerk that we had the past couple of years, she, um, she's done a better job of putting things in their proper categories that weren't done before. Mm -hmm. So there are lots of changes in numbers that we have discussed the past year or so as things become more accurate in their mm -hmm. line items. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Daryl? Uh, yeah, just some uh, information. The animal control officer position is in the police department and they were doing uh, final interviews at the beginning of February. So hopefully um, they've um, been able to make an offer to somebody. So at least we can resolve that problem. Great. Thanks for that update, Daryl. Annie? Yeah, I just want to make a slight correction to um, something Dave said. I, I believe Julie Brazil is the keeper of records. What Jim Feeney's doing is responding to public records requests. And those are sort of two distinct things. The keeping of records is the records have to be there and they've got to be properly filed and noticed and sent to all the places they're supposed to go and so on and so forth. But the responding to FOIA requests is trying to figure out where all the things a person is asking for under Freedom of Information Act and getting it to them and pricing that because we actually charge for that when I, I believe we're allowed to charge the cost of producing the records to the requester. Right, but, but, but also because of the, the volume of, of recently in the past few years of, of requests um, for what, what you just mentioned, Annie, that's primarily why the, the whole thing went, in, went under the, the uh, deputy town manager. Yes, because right. the volume has increased and the complexity of the records has increased. Exactly, and that's, his, his and that's also what happened. Yeah, sorry. That, that, also, that also happened in the, in the zoning budget a couple of years ago. That's why they, they put a 0.29 position, which is now a 0.89 position. That's part of it. Not all of it, but that's part of it. Okay. Dean, so you these, have a hand um, up. Correct. I do. Um, I just want to make sort of, I want to make two observations. Um, could we go back to the clerk's budget for a second? So this is a, a small thing that has very little, it has nothing to do with the clerk budget, but has something to do with another topic we bring up, which is, you know, we've talked about before, these documents are, um, well, this budget book is an export to the general ledger but then goes into an Excel document that gets manipulated and it causes frustration, right? So you look at this line item, it should be a general ledger account, 5227, find it. So if you just do a control F function and you search the document, you find that 5227 shows up in three different accounts, but when the, or three different departments, it shows up in clerk, it shows up in fire, and it shows up in library. But fire and library call it books and materials. Right, and I, I would actually guess that at some point the control would change it from binding to books and materials, right? So if you went into the general ledger and you said run general ledger account 5227, you'd get books and materials. But it has to then get changed in multiple places on an Excel spreadsheet. And though this is a small little thing, it sort of points out this like, you know, what I think we could categorize as like death by a thousand pinpricks, where instead of just getting it straight out of the system because we're manipulating, once changes have to get made, they have to get made over and over again because these small little wrinkles that have to get screwed up. That was the first thing. The second thing I did just about the um, we've had some discussions about um, vacancies and like how to budget them and, and things like that. I just want to know one of the challenges with budgeting vacancies in the town is um, if a position is can we know that um, salary? I mean the actual salary page. Right, so so most of the people are, if you go to that BU column, right? Everyone's generally SEIU or ASPE, that's the one that they do, right? Um, and if somebody were to transfer in and out of a position and they already have tenure and seniority and steps and all that, they carry them into the new position. So historically, if you go back in the clerk's um, department years and 
like like go back let's say 20 years you'd find this 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 movement of people got a job and they got a position in the clerk's office maybe they transferred to the select board office maybe they transferred somewhere else and as they move they um they keep that seniority and so you know the reverse also becomes true so the clerk's going to post this position and the question is well should you know we would like for the clerk to you know pay at the bottom of the range but if the, the candidate who for, get, gets the position has an equivalent seniority and longevity, then they have to assume essentially that position. I mean, there's not, these are unionized contracts, right? So a grade three, step nine, with that longevity gets that money. Like that, we don't get to negotiate that after the fact. So I, I want to point that out because I think that's kind of the, um, the, the struggle that the town has in creating these budgets is they don't know who the person's going to be. And if they're just going to have to put that item over for the next year. Thanks. Sophie? So yes, um, that is true for the union positions. In this particular instance though, there is nobody I believe in the town, um, currently employed by the town that would have, would meet this level for the assistant town clerk because she's been there so long and she's at the maximum. So nobody would come in, even if it was a transfer internally. At that right, level. I'm talking about it in general though. Because okay. in general, we keep, and I think you've done it too, so we keep making this comment about like, I hope they hire at the bottom of the grade. But that's assuming an external person. Right. And that's a leap that nobody here can make because we don't, we're not the personnel director. Like, I'm just trying to point out because I think we've heard it like three times. Right. Although I think in the in the budgets we've been doing, most of them um, are non-union, like in the selectments. In those they are, yeah. All right. But every, Any... everybody, everybody in the clerk's office is union, except the clerk. Correct. Okay. Selectmen, they're non-union. Do you have, Sophie, Dave, do you have a uh, motion? Yes, I, I, I'd like to present a motion to, for the, um, the clerk's budget as posted in, in the budget book as 286-814. Second. All right, any further discussion on the town clerk's budget? All right, seeing none, we'll take it to, to vote. All right, Jordan. Yes. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie. Yes. John. Yes. Daryl. Yes. Annie. Yes. L. Jones. Yes. Topher. Yes. Peggy. Yes. Altosti. Yes. Dean. Yep. And Dave. Yes. All right. Town clerk's pass. Budget has passed unanimously. Um, Sophie, Dave, do you have another? Motion? Yes, I, I'd like to move to uh, uh, for the election budget of uh, 195840. Second. Any further discussion on the election budget? All right. Seeing no hands up, let's take it to a vote. Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Dean? Yes. And Dave? Yes. All right. The election budget has passed unanimously. And the next budget uh, is the board like, of registries, registrars. Yes, yeah, registrars. And the only change there is a change in personnel. Um, 
where, where the, the, there was retirement, uh, assistant register of voters. Um, and you'll see the, the, uh, the stipends for the registrar of voters and also a stipend for um, Julie Brazil, who is a registrar, considered the registrar of voters. So there's been some changes there, but the. the um, All right. Does anyone have any questions uh, on the registrar's budget? Shane. Thanks, Madam Chair. Can you just remind me that the, the responsibilities for the board of registrars and how they're different from the clerk's office? Say that again. I, I I couldn't quite make out the, the, the I just the, the the responsibilities of the board of registrars, like just like the well, well, primarily the board of registrars. Usually you'll see them the board um, on election day, whatever election day. They 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 they're, they're checking um, voter list and 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 whatnot, and and then they also uh, make up that the, they check the tr the true list. It's um. It's a, for the sake of it, it's a part-time position and it, and it does pay a, a small stipend. And the, the part of it, you have to be either, one has to be a Democrat, one has to be a Republican, or you can be unenrolled. But you can't, you can't have more than one. So that's why it's three. Thank you, Dan. You're one of each. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on the registrar's? Budget. Okay, so I'll make a motion to accept the figure at 71535. Second. Second. Okay. All right, motion to approve the registrar's budget has been made and seconded. Um, any questions, discussion? All right, let's take it to a vote. Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Sophie? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. L. Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Altosti? Yes. Dean? Yes. And Dave? Yes. The registrar's budget has passed unanimously. Uh, Sophie, okay, Dave, Madam Jim, Jim, yeah, we, we have um, the, the planning and development budget and the redevelopment budget, the small one. Okay. So, um, and now I'm going to turn this over to Sophie. Okay, what page are you on, Sophie? 69. Okay, if we can start quickly on the details, salary details. Um, the, so the new director um, had only been on the job, I don't remember, Dave, if it was 30 days or 45 days before we met with her. So um, it's, it, it's probably about 55 days now, so. <laughs> right, so um, I, I think we were able to answer our own questions based on our notes from last year <laughs> more than anything. Um, but everything has basically stayed level. So what was in the explainer from the town manager's office um, regarding the director's salary is that she came in at a um, fixed rate and then is now going to be um, receiving a 6,000 step and joining the classification system. Um, thus the, the big change in there on her salary. There are a couple of vacancies on the office manager. She will look to fill it at the lowest pay possible. Um, it was reclassified in the fall from what I understand. So it looks like a bigger increase in the book than um, what it actually was because the reclassification was after last year's budget. It is a union position. The senior transportation planner position is hopefully going to be filled in March, so soon. Then we can go back up, I think, to um, expenses. So 
not any changes from last year. The stipend 5160 is based on the union contract. 5203 is just based on actually um, purchases of new desks and such. The auto allowance is just mileage. The dues, um, there hasn't been a net change in employees, even though there's been a lot of turnover. So the dues are gonna stay the same. It's based on the number of employees that have um, AICP um, certified and they have to uh, require continuing education and specialized training. Uh, 5218 for training, that's for sustainability dues and training, economic development training and national planning conferences. Um, we are told to expect in the future requests for increases here because this only pays the registration costs for conferences. It doesn't cover per diems or stays at the conferences. So it seems low to our new um, director of this office. Uh, the other interesting piece was 5354 on technology and economic development. We have a software that tracks vacancies. That is actually, um, has la the contract for that has lapsed, but there's a new dashboard in the works. Um, so they're keeping the funding for that as is. As far as any other general information from this office, it's that there are no warrant article appropriations planned for this year. We asked for an update based on the blue bike warrant article from last year for 100,000. Um, our understanding from that conversation is that at the moment, we own blue bike materials. There's no current contract and no funding is needed at this time. Um, that there are negotiations happening because bigger cities um, such as Boston and Cambridge get better deals out of blue bike than the surrounding areas. And to the extent that those cities are trying to turn to blue bikes as a means of transportation, public transportation like buses and subways, that some of that benefit of better deals should be passed on to surrounding communities. Um, so that is all in the works and discussions at the moment, that there's no money being asked for for blue bikes. Um, the economic development coordinator position was vacant for several months. The new hire is focusing on vacant properties um, and is hoping to eventually argue for more teeth and our penalties for how um, owners manage the vacant lots for businesses. The outdoor dining is going to continue and lots of new tenants and promising prospects are identified for the center um, in the bit of time the new economic development coordinator has been on the job. So things should be improving. And I think that's, um, yeah, that's it for this budget. Okay, thank you, Sophie. Uh, Jennifer. Hi, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a question, the GIS coordinator that we had for a while, person who moved to Mexico, we were having him part-time. I thought that was in the planning department um, budget. Is that somewhere else? It doesn't sound familiar to me. I don't know. Maybe it's in a different department. I think it's in IT. Yeah, GIS oh. yeah, yeah, so is probably in IT. Oh. It got moved so, around. It got sort of reclassified. Got it. Okay. Great, thanks. Anything else, Jennifer? Rebecca. Thank you. Um, I had a question about the offset that was labeled school offset. That looks like half of the sustainability manager. Is that correct? Um, I don't remember from when we asked last year, but it's possible that it's the time spent on those buildings. Okay. It, it matches best the half of the sustainability manager, as I can tell. I think that's true, Rebecca. I think that's correct. Okay. So, so effectively, that person sort of works half with the town type buildings and half with the school type buildings. Is that would that be the right interpretation? Yes. Great. Thank you, Topher. Yeah. Um, can we go back up to the top, the 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 previous page? So I'm not. Just, I'm, this isn't computing for me. So we have the salaries and wages was you know, 583,000 in 2022 and went up by almost $200,000. I'm not understanding how we got there. Um, do we hire new positions? Um, oh, that I believe um, this came about last year with the CDBG planning, what we now see in the offsets 
if I'm remembering correctly, um, they didn't use to, the salaries didn't used to be included there and it wasn't transparent. So they've started adding them, but then there are the offsets for them. Well, I see the offsets cover maybe 75,000 of that $200,000 increase. Yeah. But I'm still curious as to where the other 125,000 goes. I mean, is it like, has there been a new position or, I mean, it, it couldn't just be raises and steps and things. At least to me, it doesn't seem like that would be very likely. Um, I don't know if Dave, I only joined last year, so I can only say what we talked about last year. Um, no, was, I, 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 don't, I don't know of any other um, new, new positions other than what's posted here. And, um, so, right, so the, the first... Um, the increase to 700 and the 2022 budget, when I go back to last year's book, the 2022 budget shows as 706,000. I don't know what it was before, so I don't know if they've just always been. Oh, spending. I don't know the history. Spending way less than his budget. Possibly in that year, they had some position vacancy or something, Topher. But you're comparing an actual to a budget. You'd have to go back and look at budgets to yes. see whether or not there was actually an increase. Yes, and if you look in the finance committee report, the the budget went up about eighty thousand dollars. The appropriation went up about eighty thousand dollars. So that represents unspent money. In other words, the actual was twenty twenty two actual was considerably less than the budgeted amount. Right. Yeah. That Must have been sense. vacancies. Oh, I see. Josh put in something about transportation coordinator. That that was there from since 2021. Okay. Yeah, right That's now. one thing people can, if you want to see what the appropriation was, you can go back to the finance committee reports, right. which we don't have actuals. We have what the appropriation was. Okay, so what I think is happening then is we had um, less money spent in 2022 than was budgeted. And Correct. there's been an offset added into 2023 yep. and on to, um, and the offsets come from CDBG. There's a lot of offsets. Oh, um, that's right. There's a whole list of them. That's right. 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 Okay. There is the salaries are not broken up. Okay. I have a better picture of this now. Thank you. Any other questions on the planning department budget? Um, do I have a motion, Sophie or Dave? So moved. Second. All right, so the planning department, the um, community and planning development department budget with a taxation total of 635032 has been moved and seconded. Seconded. Is there any further discussion? All right, we'll take it to a vote. Jordan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Jennifer? Uh, yes. Sophie? Yes. Carolyn? Carolyn? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. Josh? Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. L. Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Altasti? Yes. Ding? Yes. Dave? Yes. Yeah. Right. Planning department has been has passed unanimously. Sophie, Dave, do you have anything else? We have uh, one more. more. We, uh, go ahead, Sophie. It's page 73, redevelopment board, or page 74. There are no changes here. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. The advertising has to do, I think, with the warrant articles for meetings. Um, one question potentially could be that if there's a special town meeting now, should that advertising budget increase? 
to cover a second meeting, but I think it, all the zoning articles that would have been in the first one are now going to the special, so maybe not, but they didn't seem to ask for an increase since this has been published. So I think we recommend passage of the 10,800. There's a second? Second. All right, Shane, you have your hand up. Thank you. Can you just remind me of the redevelopment board's role? What do they do? They pass the, they review permits and zoning um, for special, is it, or am I confusing the zoning board? So what do you want to? Yeah. The redevelopment board, uh, um, they have redevelopment hearings um, there's easements, there's, there's all kinds of rules on, on the redevelopment. And um, um, so they have to have hearings and hearings have to be, you know, posted and whatnot. But it's, um, it's basically on, on redevelopment of, of buildings and property. I mean, yeah, yeah, they consider like changes to the zoning laws as opposed to adjudicating um, the zoning board is the one where someone says, I have my property, I want to do something out of compliance, and can you give me a special permit? But I think the redevelopment board takes like a broader view of the, the zoning in general in town. Right. right. So the studies that have been paid for in recent town meetings um, are appropriated, go what to do with buildings and how they should look like, and and then that gets... The master, the master plan. Right. Right. Thanks Does that answer everyone. your question, Shane? Thank you, everyone, yeah. Jennifer? Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I can just add some more stuff. Uh, so the ZBA de deals with anything to do with residential properties, um, with the exception of these weird cases where properties are located sort of near a bike path or near something else, in which case it has to go to the ARB. Um, the ZBA also deals with the, I'm, I'm just distinguishing, I know I didn't ask about ZBA, but the ZBA deals with um, 40B, and then so the ARB does everything else. So they do everything having to do with commercial properties, anything uh, large construction that's not a residential single or two-family home, but you know a large building or, or a multi-use building, um, and they have hearings on that, they suggest changes, they et cetera, et cetera. They also propose and review any uh, bylaw changes that affect those commercial buildings or large residential buildings or multi-use buildings. Thank you. Did you have a, anything else, Jennifer, a question? No, just because I, I hang around these meetings a lot. I just I thought I could add something. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Uh, anything else anyone has on the redevelopment board budget? All right. Uh, I think Sophie, you made a motion, and was it seconded by Dave? Yes. Yeah. All right. Yes. Um, all right. Let's take a vote on the redevelopment board budget. Jordan. Yes. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant. Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. El Tosti? Yes. Dean? Yes. And Dave? Yes. All right, the redevelopment board budget has passed unanimously. Um, are you done, um, Sophie and Dave, with your budgets? We are. Um, yeah, we are concluded with the exception of, of the, the select board's budget that will be. Um, we'll take that up. We'll Alan take that Jones up at the next, we'll hopefully yours. at the next meeting. Yes, thank you. All right. And that, that concludes our budgets. All right. Um, who has. Um, we have about 22 minutes left. Who has a budget or Madam two Chair, or three? I, get, I think we can get through inspections in very right, short take, order. All right, take it away, Daryl and John. Um, okay. Um, no, I'm sorry, Tara. Go back to the first page. Um, 
So on the salary side, the uh, the small increase in the 5100 line is due to uh, having the director on for the full year, um, having zoning assistant for the full year, and then a record keeper increased from 14 hours a week to 31 hours a week. Uh, we'll look at that in just a second. On these on the uh, expenses side, there's no changes. Um, so Tara, if you can go to um, the um, dollar detail. Um, so the, the two positions I called out, um, the uh, zoning assistant is the second one from the bottom. Uh, that, that person was on for the full year. And then the record keeper inspections increased uh, um, her hours uh, from 14 to 31. So that counts on the salary side. And then um, uh, unprecedented for me, at least in doing their budget, they had no vacancies, uh, which is great. Um, over this coming summer, they plan on um, going up with online permitting, uh, doing through being done through the uh, town IT department, um, and that should really uh, provide a much more efficient process for both people submitting permits and then department personnel managing the permits. And then they are planning on moving back to the new Grove Street buildings. Um, in a couple of months, they're going to be moving into the new building, not the the one that they used to be in um, that's being renovated. And their new space should be larger, uh, will be larger than what they had in their old building um, with a much more efficient st storage area. So that should be all good for them. Uh, and then Tara, if you could pull up that permits slide. Um, so this is actually more detail on permits than, than we've gotten um, previously. Uh, you can see that permit revenues increased by 27.5% over this four-year period, even though the actual number of permits only increased by 8%. Um, the total value of the projects that they cover is increased by 26%. Um, a lot of the activity um, over the last two to three years has been uh, affected by COVID. Um, originally in um, in fiscal 20, they actually, uh, when COVID first, uh, the pandemic really first started, uh, there were real concerns that construction work would grind to a complete halt, but uh, that didn't happen in large part because of uh, uh, large increases in home renovations. Um, the COVID effects do, uh, at least on permits, uh, do appear to be leveling, leveling off, but uh, remains to be seen, um, you know, what, um, sort of steady state permit revenues will be um, uh, once the COVID effects have fully um, sort of worked their way out of the system, whether it'll go back to being uh, more around the levels of, um, it wasn't fiscal 20, we're on 95 million, or whether some number um, over 100 million uh, is gonna be the new normal. Um, so that's it on inspections, any questions? Well, Jones. Thank you. Um, I maybe should have asked this illegal, but do you know if the was there any discussion about any possible legal expo financial exposure of the town from the alleged misdeeds of the previous inspector? Um, that did not come up. Okay. Well, thank you. I, I will say, uh, that, yeah, it, we didn't it, we didn't ask and. and Mike Trump, I didn't volunteer anything. Um, that, that Alan, that that's still the findings that they have ninety days to respond to that. So I still think they're in that ninety day period. Yeah, I'm just wondering if that will, will cost you know will cost the town something. Does the town have any legal involvement in that, or is it all strictly between the individual and the ethics board? Um, at, at the at this point. Uh, the town doesn't know. Okay. At this point. Okay. Dean? Thank you. So, Daryl, you said on the permit, the permit revenue here is two million, or two point two million estimate, and you're saying he's not seeing a slowing down of permitting this year, or he's seeing a leveling off. I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? He's seeing he's seeing some leveling off, but there's still a lot of activity. 
Um, he just doesn't know um, if that's going to be kind of the new level or whether things will drop back down. What will be? You mean, you mean the two two will be the new level? The two point two million or the one eight? Um. So yeah, whether whether we're going to be sort of consistently over two million or whether got it, it'll it'll go back down. Okay, thanks. Anybody have anything else? Um, Daryl, do you okay. have a motion? Yep. So I move that we adopt the uh, the budget as printed for inspections of five hundred twenty seven thousand. And eighty-two dollars. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion on inspections? All right, seeing none, we'll take it to a vote. Jordan. Yes. Shane. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Sophie. Yes. Carolyn. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Josh. Yes. Grant? Yes. Charlie? Yes. John? Yes. Daryl? Yes. Annie? Yes. Al Jones? Yes. Topher? Yes. Peggy? Yes. Al Tosti? Yes. Dean? Yes. And Dave? Yes. Inspections? The inspections department budget has passed unanimously. Um, who else has budgets ready? Retirement's ready. I don't know if we have enough time to do it, but we could try. Uh, let's give it a go. If we don't finish, we'll continue on, on uh, Monday, but let's see if we can do that. Okay. Uh, it's on page uh, 151 in the book. So um, basically, um, I have some presentation material for these two different uh, budgets. Uh, one, the uh, retirement cost is for the uh, Arlington Contributory, Contributory Retirement System. And then um, this line that's zero uh, is actually related to what we refer to the, as the OPEB budgets. If you can give me my, um, can, can I have uh, share screen control and let me, um, you should be able to share, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, where the heck was that? Shoot. Sorry, I just lost. I had this minute to a few minutes ago. Do you want me to share it, Charlie? I, I think I have it handy. Yeah, that's that. Let me just get, give me one second here. Here we go. Okay, so this is a, a, an annotated presentation mostly from uh, the retirement um, uh, We're not board. seeing it yet, Charlie, you got to open it up. Oh. Or you're not sharing, it's possible you're not sharing the your whole desktop. Could be. And you need to share the particular document. How's that? I now we can see it. Okay. So um, we had our meeting on the 15th, uh, Al Tosti, Topher, and uh, myself with Rich Greco, who's the uh, administrator for the or executive director of the retirement board. Uh, and um, just a comment on the non contributory pay. Uh, non contributory line, which is shown as zero on page 151. We have a, a tradition or practice in town 
where um, 20 years ago, we were paying $500,000 a year to people uh, in the non-contributory payroll system, pension system. And um, they were all people who worked for the town before 1939. And they have since, they and their survivors have since been deceased. But we, we decided at the time, Al, uh, Tassi actually decided at the time to um, put the difference between whatever their payroll was and the $500,000 that was currently in the budget into the OPEB trust fund. That's the other post-employment benefits uh, trust fund, which basically covers uh, retirees' uh, healthcare costs. And then uh, we also had an agreement with the town where we would put um, uh, 150, 155,000 in the um, in, for, as part of a agreement negotiated with the employees regarding moving to GIC, and um, so that combined is is 100 and uh, 650,000. Um, we were getting. Uh, some of this money from the healthcare trust fund in um, in the past. This year, um, Sandy Pooler has noted that there's there was a substantial amount of money, about a million four hundred seventy thousand dollars in the trust fund, which wasn't um, which didn't have any demand. In other words, the the uh, requirements on that money, which we used when we were self-insured before the GIC uh, adoption. Uh, was just sitting there. So he's made the recommendation to transfer all but 50,000 of that uh, to the OPEB fund. So that comes to 2067454 Now, we might want to um, vote this when the Warren article comes up. There's some annotation on the background that is in the document that was sent out to you. Um, <clears throat> and this is a letter from uh, Sandy, basically uh, the background on his uh, his intention to uh, rec or his recommendation to transfer a million four hundred twelve thousand four hundred fifty-four uh, to the OPEP fund. Okay, then <clears throat> um, this is just a, uh, we we now have uh, twenty million dollars in the OPEP fund, and um, this is now being managed by a company called uh, Makita. Uh, note that there's been a loss. Um, which is common to most market funds over the last year or so. This is as, by the way, as of December 31st, 2022. Uh, this money is gonna be, these funds are gonna be transferred to the, to the uh, PRIT fund, which is, which is part of the uh, General State Retirement uh, Board Management of Pension Funds in, a, in an arrangement which will get us into a bigger pool and get higher returns. That's uh, going to take place uh, th through a Warren article this year. Makita is the current uh, the current manager of this, and the the details of their performance is shown here. Um, I don't. I, I, let me just say that we're not fully funding the OPEB liability, so our liability is stated at a higher level than it would be if we were funding it on a more aggressive position. If, if you were fully funding it or at a rate that had a fully funded target, the discount rate would be around 7%, which is um, sort of sort of the, the rate of the uh, general market returns. But it has to, since we're not fully funding it, it has to be uh, discounted more at the, um, closer to the cost of funds of Arlington, which is in the two to 3% range. And consequently, our our express liability on this is substantially higher. We're up in this uh, 200 to $240 million range. Um, okay, this is a letter from PERAC directing us to uh, for our appropriation this year. And this um, is under article, the article, I'm sorry, the budget on page uh, 151. And 15 million of this goes into the Arlington Contributory Retirement Fund and 603,000 gets uh, transferred from um, the Arlington Housing Authority, which is not part of our um, uh, purview. So we have a lot of uh, data here uh, with, with respect to how this gets fully funded, but we had an agreement with the 
um, with the retirement board to since the last override to fund at an annual increase rate of six percent a year. And if we had followed that, you know, in so many years, we would be quote unquote fully funded. In other words, we would have enough money in the fund so that its revenues would cover the expenses of all current and future um, retirees. This uh, recently, the town manager came to a uh, revised agreement with the retirement board to have this annual increase pegged at 5.5%, which helps the town budgets. And under that funding schedule, the um, uh, unfunded liability gets fully funded in uh, 2034. Now, uh, recently, the uh, PARAC. Uh, got a uh, an act passed that would give retirees a one-time COLA adjustment of 5%. And the um, this doesn't have to be approved by town meeting. It had to be approved. It could be approved by the, the select board and the select board approved it. So um, they will see a, a, a one-time uh, Im improvement of um, uh, increase in their COLA of 5% on the first $15,000 of their uh, retirement fund. So the, the following pages here are just all background on this legislative um, um, rule that was passed by the, uh, the legislature and the governor and adopted by the selectmen. So we don't need to really spend a lot of time on that. But on page 12, there is a revised retirement schedule based upon what this looks like after the 5% adjustment. And it's down slightly from the prior forecast, but basically it's um, uh, still around, around 2034. Um, and then there's a whole series of uh, pieces of information here, which uh, you can feel free to peruse at your leisure with respect to the uh, retirement uh, status based on the actuarial reports provided by the Stone actuarial firm uh, as of January 1st, 2022. They're always a, a full year behind and it's always on a calendar year, just, just as a, just by the, the way the system works. Um, if you have any questions on any of these, uh, any of this data, please feel free to ask. But uh, the only one that I would draw your attention to is that um, there are some, this is looks anomalous that there's people age 30 to 34, maybe under 50 that are getting um, retirement benefits. And these are exceptional and they are generally the result of, um, let's say that a, uh, a, a retiree dies and uh, the, the person's spouse is much younger. That, that person would get some of the benefits, but that um, would be at a, at a younger age. Or a retiree could, could uh, for example, get divorced, and that person, uh, the the, uh, the after the separation, the other the other uh, member would would receive part of those benefits. We can't really get to, into too much de more detail on this because this is all uh, confidential, protected uh, HIPAA information. But as you can see, most of the retiree benefits are are uh, grouped in a cohort of ages that one would expect, uh, you know, 50 and above. And of course, um, disabled members, they would, you know, disabilities can occur at almost any age. So every, every year, the Stone Consulting Group goes through a complete evaluation of the retirement fund, what its earnings are, and um, when we can expect to be uh, fully funded. I have to say, unfortunately, uh, every, number of years there's a setback like the um, you know in the last several years in COVID and and the that uh, fully funded date always seems to be elusive moving out a little bit further but um, the one other uh, item to draw your attention to here is that um, there's a section of the law referred to as 38c which covers employees that work have worked in different municipal jurisdictions. So for example, um, a prior town manager, Brian Sullivan was, I think before he came to Arlington, was the town manager at 
in Winchester, and then he was in other municipal um, uh, jurisdictions before that. So his retirement fund payments have to be distributed over various towns. And, and by uh, the retirement board, by following up on all the employees who are getting benefits uh, to make sure that all of the prior towns pay the appropriate amount towards those benefits winds up with, um, we, this is before the protest and this, this is after the protest. So the town gets each year has gotten a certain amount of savings as a result of following through on this um, multiple jurisdiction uh, retirement issue. And there was one uh, specific uh, situation where many years ago, the Minuteman uh, Vocational School District's retirement board was entirely managed by Arlington. And, um, and they eventually had got redressed through a court action and, the, uh, and we received uh, um, additional funds from Minuteman. So that brought the gains up to this $2 million figure. Um, the only other comment uh, that I would make is that um, just like the other uh, funds, the, uh, the FRIM state managed funds closed down uh, this year by uh, roughly 10%. And um, there's you know, various details here on where the funds are invested. This is all done at the state level and there's billions of dollars invested in these various categories. This is the um, returns that the FRIM has gotten for the town over the years. So you can see the one year return is 10.8%, minus 10.8%, but over a 10 year period, it's been around eight, uh, maybe 9% since the beginning of uh, the funding process. So on the average there, uh, including downturns, sort of beating, beating the market, market average. Um, M&T Bank is the um, fiduciary that, or, or trust institution, however you want to call it, that, that handles the cash. Uh, this equity amount is the, the PRIT funds that um, the town has under control of PRIT and this uh, cash equivalent. This is the money that moves in and out of the, um, of the bank on a sort of a monthly basis, which includes money taken out of the PRIT fund and which includes payments by the, um, uh, current payments by the employees into the fund and the net result of which is used to pay the current expenses uh, of the retirees. These private equity amounts are, um, you know, they, the retirement board, before they transferred the money to CRIT, um, had a whole series of uh, different investors and uh, some of them were long-term contracts. These are being wound down and eventually uh, there won't be, uh, there won't be this category. It'll all be either in, you know, the cash moving in and out or it'll be in the print fund. Um, so just a comment, the, the Arlington Contributory Retirement Board is not financed through town meeting. All the finances come out of the, um, the fund itself. And this is as a result of a change in the state law, oh, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, maybe 20 years ago. But in an agreement with the retirement board, the finance committee um, reviews their budget just to be sure that there's nothing unusual going on there. In, in exchange, um, we agreed to uh, generally approve their COLA increases provided that the town has also uh, approved raises that year for the, for the um, town employees. And there was, uh, during uh, the 2009 recession period, uh, a situation where the town did not give raises and the retired employees uh, did not get a COLA increase. So that's basically the arrangement with the uh, retirement board. So this shows, um, the, this is what the board, the five board members, what they receive. Um, custodian of funds is a, a stipend for the custodian. Um, the retirement administrator is Rich Greco. He's got an assistant. And then the overtime, the reason this overtime is up this year is because it's likely that um, his assistant administrator is going to be retiring and they have to have some um, overlap for training purposes. The rest of the, um, the rest of the funds are, you know, 
pretty pretty normal to meet their expenses. Um, and you know the budget. This this is um, I would say it's a, a you know reasonable amount of money considering the total um, total amounts that they have uh, under operations. So um, I think that brings us to the end, um, and we're making a recommendation of um, the budget that is right here to um, to appropriate the fifteen million six hundred and seventy six thousand two seventy nine less the. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. If you can bring up the. Uh, that uh, budget page 151, Tara, I appreciate that. That less the less the um, the offsets, which are principally water and sewer. One sec. Page 152. Yes. I it, because of the late hour, um, I'm not going to bring this to a vote tonight. And it's also a great amount of information that people have um, in front of them. Um, Charlie, Tara, we have not seen Charlie's presentation, correct? In um, paper, has it been distributed yet? Like at seven o'clock tonight. Okay, all right. Um, so um, we'll take a vote whenever you want. Well, do people feel like they they are ready for a vote tonight? I don't think I don't think we are. I think because it is a it's a big uh, chunk of money. Um, I think people should have the opportunity to look over what was um, distributed earlier tonight, and then I think this will be our first order of business when we convene on Monday. But before we break, I just want to be clear about um, what the proposed vote would be. That would be the 14 million 13, 875. Right. And at the same time, we'll there'll be a warrant article appropriation of six fifty six five five. No, two million. Um, two million. Yeah, it's the it's the it's the it's the number, the bottom number in red on the second page. But that's that's a separate vote. That's not this right. vote. Right. And I don't know, uh, I mean it's Madam Chair, it's up to you whether you want to vote it uh, now or when we actually have the Warren article. Well, I, I, I'm in, inclined to wait until the Warren article, but I just want to let people give sort of people the uh, uh, heads up that it, it is part of the same issue here. Carolyn, your hand is up. I really, I don't want to, I don't want to open up any questions other than yep. just get an understanding. Of what we're going to be, what we're doing, which is we're um, just going to adjourn, reconvene, and take a vote on this, and also entertain any questions on this on Monday. Okay. Um, the one, the one thing I was going to say is that the um, the retirement has to be funded by twenty thirty five. Um, so, which is why you see that five point five versus five point zero percent per year. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. It's been a long night. We've done a lot of budgets. Uh, hopefully everyone or most people will have budgets ready by next week, or at least people will try. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. All right. Uh -huh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Don't everyone Aye. move at once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We will... We will reconvene on Monday. All right. Good night, everyone. Thank Good you. Night. Good, Good night, everyone. Bye-bye.